Hello, friend. I'm Kerry Farr. Welcome to In Your Corner. Joined by my good buddy, Bobby Hayden. And Bobby, you brought some, what do they say, birds of a feather flock together. You brought some of them fellas that you can kind of relate to. Tell us a little bit about who's on the show with us today. I'm going to tell you a little story here how God works. As you know, I moved to Franklin, Tennessee about four months ago. And I found myself parked out a, a parked in front of Soul Shine Pizza Factory. And I walked in there and I got hired on the spot. And this general manager by the name of Gail Ripley, she said, uh, you need to go to Grace Chapel out in Leapersport. And I said, really? So I thought about that. And a couple of days later, a little boy walked up to me in a park and said, hi, I'm Jackson. And their parent, his parents came over and they said, we'd like to take you to our church. And I said, where? And they said, Grace Chapel. And I said, well, here it is. I don't need a telegram. So <laughs> I went to Jake Grace Chapel, and I heard Pastor Steve, Steve. Yeah. and uh, Spirit-filled man, and he just, the love that he had for his flock and his people, just, it was warm. And I knew I was in the right place. So uh, Phil Keggy, yeah. he came to, he plays guitar out there, and I went to see Phil because I'm a guitar player. and. I, oh, my gosh, yeah. And I, he has an open invitation to come on the show, by the way. <laughs> I haven't heard Phil play. I was talking about your no, play. But anyway, no, go for it. I'm talking about Phil. So anyway, it was the Celebrate Recovery anniversary of five years. Five years at our And church. Randy Thompson, sitting right here, walked up on that stage yeah. and said a few things that just really touched me. And you mm. use humor and you, you use the love of Jesus. And... Uh, I said, man, i got to go to one of these meetings. So I went to one of your meetings, and look at me, Carrie. I'm kind of an oddball out. And you I fit was, right in there. <laughs> you fit right in. I was welcomed with open arms. Uh -huh. I met guys that had been there, done that, bought the T-shirt and coffee mug. <laughs> yep. And uh, we just struck up a relationship, and this is all spirit to spirit, no mm -hmm. doubt about it. And uh, I invited Randy and a couple friends from that Celebrate Recovery meeting here today. And thank you for coming, Randy. Appreciate the invite. Amen. Mm -hmm. Good to see you guys. Now, Bobby, what most people don't know, we're in the Nashville, Tennessee area, Music City, USA. And, yeah. and it, there's an old song that said there's 1,452 guitar players in Nashville. Mm -hmm. I think there's more in that now than that when that song was written. But out there in Leaper's Fork, it's a little historic town. And they got a little store out there called Puckets. Yep. And one day uh, there was this fellow sitting out there eating uh, blackberry cobbler by the name of Alan Jackson. So you just never know when you go out to Leaper's Fork what you're going to run into. So have Randy tell us a little bit uh, more about what's going on out in Leaper's Fork. Well, we, you know, our church has been out there since 1994. Actually, Pastor Steve uh, came here from California, believe it or not. They were out visiting and looking at some places and all, and they went back home. <clears throat> and they were in Leaper's Fork, and they liked it. And they went back home, and it was like, well, I, f I feel like the Lord wants us to open a church out there. Now, in 1994, almost everybody, I think it was a requirement, to have chicken and cows in their yard yeah. <laughs> back then. And so here he is, a, you know, kind of a city boy from Southern California. That didn't make a whole lot of sense unless the Lord wanted it to happen. So he did. He moved, and some people that believed in him packed up their families from California and moved out there too. And it's been a, a struggle early on, as it always is, meeting in schools, tearing up, putting stuff up, tearing it back down, putting it up, tearing it down. But the, uh, the Lord has blessed it. He really has. He's, they've gifted Steve and all the pastors on the staff with really just being rooted in the Word of God. And it's just taken off. And we've got... Thousands and thousands and thousands of people show up every week out there. Now, Randy, you know what's what's interesting about that? Leapers Fork, population 19, and you got thousands of people. Oh yeah. <clears throat> I mean, I mean it might be it might be more than it might be a couple hundred people. Uh, but there, there are people that drive from North Alabama to come to church to come to church on Sunday, mm -hmm. and and after a while they come so much they go, well, we gonna move, and and be there. That's. So it, it is sort of a destination church. It's not a church you're just going to drive by on the way to anywhere and everywhere. It's kind of like if you want to go, you're going, and it's to be there. And so it, it really is an awesome experience. Um, so we, we enjoy it. 
about five years ago, the pastors came to me and said, you know, we're thinking about putting together a recovery program. We're really interested in doing this nationwide program called Celebrate Recovery. Now, Celebrate Recovery is a little bit different than other recovery programs in that it's a Christ-centered 12-step program. I mean, if you go to, a, and nothing wrong with Alcoholics Anonymous or Narcotics Anonymous or Sex Anonymous or whatever, but they call it a higher power. And our higher power has a name. His name is Jesus. And so we, we talk about Jesus. Anything and everything that we do in terms of our 12 steps and our eight principles are rooted in God's Word. We always have a biblical reference to anything and everything that we do. And so um, we were talking earlier, uh, it works if you work it. And so not only do we deal with, I, I call it the big three issues, sex, drugs, and alcohol. But once most people get past those, there's other character defects. Like me, I'm, I'm 21 years of freedom from sex, drugs, and alcohol. But there's other things I need to work on. Anger, food, and then procrastination. He actually gave me a coffee mug for Christmas. He said, I put the pro in procrastination. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> so it's, it's looking at these things go, well, what really at the end of the day do I have to be angry about? You know, so, you know, pulling that apart and letting God show you, okay, here's how I created you to be and here's how you became, so let's remove all these other things so you can be the man that I created you to be. And so, um, during one of our studies, we call them step studies, um, I, I really did get a, a strong impression from God on my anger issues. Because really, I got nothing to be mad about, but I was mad all the time. And the Holy Spirit told me, you no longer get to do what you want to do when you want to do it. And boy, a light went off in my head when that happened. I'm like, because that, I, I kept getting aggravated and agitated because I was getting interrupted by my kids, by my wife, by my work, by this, to keep me from doing what I wanted to do. Well, the Holy Spirit said, well, you no longer get to do what you want to do when you want to do it. And once I realized that and accepted it, the anger went away. But it took me really spending some time in the Word and with God, and with men like this, of, who struggle with some of the same stuff, is like, you know, help me figure this out. And God will bring you people to do that with. And that's what Celebrate Recovery really is all about. And you fellas, what's, what's your story? Uh, I'll go ahead. My story is God delivered me from a 25-year crazy cocaine addiction. Awesome. Um, I am now just over seven years clean from that, and uh, if I had a continued down the road I was going down, I would have certainly killed myself well, in the process. Dead. I would be dead. Um, but fortunately, um, the church brought in the program. Um, I knew that I needed to get help somehow. I tried a <coughs> secular program in the past. That didn't do it, didn't stick with it. But when I saw that Celebrate Recovery was a Christ-centered program, I thought, man, that's the ticket. I think that's what I need. You know, Bobby Hayden said he had a one-step recovery program and his name was Jesus. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. No question about so, it. So you guys yeah. point people to Jesus. Yes. Oh, yeah. That's correct. Absolutely. That's I correct. mean, we tell them when they come in, we can't fix you. Yep. We can support you. But <coughs> the only guy I know that can fix you, his name is Jesus. And everything that we do tries to get them into a personal relationship. In other words, God's Word is awesome. But if I just read it and leave it at that, it's an academic exercise. Mm -hmm. It comes alive <laughs> when I apply it to my life. And so that's what we start to see happen. When guys come in, and women too, we, you know, we're co-ed. Uh, on the first part of our meeting is co-ed, and then we break into guys and gals and talk about our issues and all. But it's watching God do his thing. I mean, it's like having a front row seat. You get to watch it happen. Doesn't happen for everybody. It's not that God's not interested, it's just they're not willing, you know. But if they're willing, boy, God takes over, just like he did for Keith's life, mm -hmm. and turned it around. Keith, yeah. what did he do for you? <clears throat> well, he's done a lot for me. And uh, uh, my, my big issue was drinking, uh, and everything that goes with drinking, you know, the, the drugs, the recreation drugs, and all that. But I started drinking when I was <clears throat> 14, and... It, it over the span of my life, it got worse and worse and worse to the point where um, 
I was getting up at eight o'clock in the morning and drinking beer and going seeing clients drunk and everything else. And uh, the Holy Spirit didn't do, come to me directly. It came to my wife, I'm, I imagine. <laughs> and, and it was at the point where she said, you need to go to this meeting. And it was an AA meeting. And I missed the first meeting. I couldn't find it. And then she said, well, you better go back next week. I'm, I'm serious about this. And so I went and I, was, I just didn't feel right at that. And then I ran into somebody and they said, hey, they got a new program down at Grace Chapel, um, a Celebrate Recovery. And I said, well, I'll go try that. And um, it's, I, just, I just felt at home at, at the Celebrate Recovery. Now, I wasn't a, a, an actual good role model, so no, no. It, it'll work for anybody. Not in the and, beginning and, you were. At yeah. the, at the, in the <laughs> beginning, I wasn't. And the program had just gotten started. It maybe been going about six months when yeah. I first started going. Well, I, I would drink a few beers on the way down to the, uh, <laughs> to the, to the program. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes I'd get a little loud and had to be taken care well, of. That's because you <clears throat> had been drinking. Exactly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so, uh, but finally, I, I chose that God and my family is, 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 is more important than taking the drinks. And so I've been over three years with no alcohol at all. Congratulations. So, yeah, so it's, mm -hmm. and it didn't really work until I started, you know, I would show up to the meetings and talk and all that, but then I would still go out and have a few drinks. Mm -hmm. And, but when, once I started reading the principles, reading the steps and actually doing them, Hello, doing them. <laughs> it works if you work it. Yeah. And mm -hmm. um, the the God had God said, okay, I'm going to deliver you from this. And so I'm now working on several other things as you pull the so you know the proverbial onion layers back. Mm -hmm. And so um, yeah, it's just it's just just awesome. And um, that's that's well, the yeah. What the we quick try version to, of my story. Well, you know? what we try to focus on is, is really here. Here are the things. What are the things that keep us from having a genuine, authentic, real relationship with other people? But more importantly, with God. I mean, we try so hard to fool him. We really do. We spend an inordinate amount of time trying to fool him, but he knows everything. You know, so being able to come clean. When we come clean to God, his promise to us is he'll forgive us. Now, in the book of James, what we also want is to be healed. And it says in the book of James that when we confess to each other and pray for each other, that's when healing comes. And so that's the main thing that happens in Celebrate Recovery. We're finally able to be transparent and be honest about who we are, what we struggle with. And what we find, almost everybody goes, yeah, me too. You know, we think it's some big secret, you know, that we're the only one, that somehow, some way, we're defective. But we're not, you know. And so there is... Um, a great deal of of happiness that comes from, oh, you, well, you struggle with this too? Okay, well, what are you doing? Here's what I found that works. What are you doing that mm -hmm. works? Okay, well, next time I get in trouble and I'm struggling with something, can I give you a call? Can I text you? Can we talk? Can we get together for coffee? Because then there's hardly anything I'm going to be able to say that you're going, yeah, here's what I did, how I did it, and here's where I get my strength from. Here's where I found <coughs> it, and here's my experience in dealing with it, you know. You know, let me ask you a question. You guys are, you know, AA and other mm -hmm. organizations use the higher power. Mm -hmm. And I've never liked that. I mean, because I'm a Christian and I yeah. believe in, in Jesus. Mm -hmm. So when we, obviously there's power in the name of Jesus. Oh, yeah. Because people have been healed. People have been delivered by faith in the name of Jesus. So from your viewpoint, and all of you can share this, even you, Bobby, uh, on how do you appropriate that power in your life as an addict? I mean, because, Easy. and the reason I want to ask that is because there's somebody out here listening that says, yeah, yep. I've tried that, but it hasn't worked for me. How do they appropriate the power of Jesus in their lives? Only Jesus and God himself can read your mind. You have to say it out loud. Satan, get thee behind me. You have to... You have to rebuke the sin. You have to take control of your thoughts, take them captive. But you have to say it out loud. The devil can't read your mind. But as soon as you say Jesus out loud, he has to run away. That's You're what God's word says. Mm -hmm. Yes. You're speaking life into it. 
So what we tell guys all the time is you get in that, that time of where you're really struggling or whatever, say it out loud. Say, talk to the sin. Get away from me in Jesus' name. And it happens. You know, but you can't just say it to yourself. You can't kind of mumble <clears throat> it in your mind. Say it out loud. That's where the power comes from. Our sin has power over us, whether we like it or not. But the more we talk about it, that we confess it, the less power it has. Because mainly the power comes from shame. You know, that binding us up. I don't want to talk about that. If I, if I told Carrie this about me, he never, he wouldn't call me again. He wouldn't like me. He'd make me get up and leave right now. You know, that's, that's the devil talking to me. You know. But if I confess it and it's out loud, it loses its power. And I, I told... And if he knew my background, he wouldn't be <laughs> my way. <laughs> well, I, I told people that... All of our backgrounds. Yeah, right, at that uh, get-together, I said, here's my story. This, this, and this. And if you don't like that, we weren't going to be friends long anyway. Yeah. You know? And, but at the end of the day, the more Keith tells his story, the more Clay tells his story, the more I tell my story, the more Bobby tells his story, and you tell your story, Strength comes from that. God uses that. Anytime a guy is struggling with, well, I'm bad, I did this, that, and the other, and oh, blah, 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 and I go, well, you were building your testimony. And, and there's the strength in that your testimony. Sin, confess your faults. <clears throat> right. Yeah. Right. right. For one another. Right. Absolutely. And this is what God has done in your life. Yeah. He yeah. has reclaimed you, but he gave you a story to tell. Yeah. And there's strength in that story. Yeah. Keith, you had yeah. something to say. Yeah, for me, it, a lot of times, it, it's not working for me. I hear that a lot. Mm -hmm. It's and I had that too. It was in my head. I want Jesus make me quit drinking, but I really didn't want to quit drinking. <laughs> okay, right. and so when when I really trusted God and it went from my head to my heart, and I said, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I need help, and mm -hmm. humbled myself to the cross. Then it was just a just a a, a change. From a, from a, I, I really want my head to quit. knowledge, your heart knowledge, but, yeah. but the, the, you also yielded, and like you say, you humbled yourself, so you yielded. Yeah. Clay, what do you think about that? I, I just think we've all got a story, and when you share your story, uh, it loses the power over you. Mm -hmm. And so that's yeah. what I try to do. Uh, I've written a testimony through the Celebrate Recovery program, and I have shared it literally all over the place, uh, even a across the sea. Um, so I try to share my story as much as possible. I actually reach out to other Celebrate Recoveries and say, hey, can I come over and share my story? You know, and they'll say, sure, come back, you know, next Friday, next but Thursday. Tell them that story of, of, yeah. of, of when you shared it on a mission trip. Yeah, yeah, I actually um, went on a mission trip uh, down to Houston when the flood hit and uh, was able to pull out my testimony in front of a group of folks that I was uh, working with and uh, and shared that testimony with them mm -hmm. and uh, so it it's just it, I really that's where I, I really get my my energy is out spreading my story now if there's somebody out there struggling Bobby had you know a miraculous experience to him but mm -hmm. but even in that miraculous experience you spent about two years out there taking care of horses in the desert right I mean yeah. you needed a time to heal I needed to be I needed to walk with Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, it's called your BWJ degree. I got a been with Jesus degree. <laughs> <laughs> and for things I'm not qualified, that I shouldn't be qualified, all of a sudden I'm qualified. Mm -hmm. And what we're talking about here is moving people toward the light. And mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's so beautiful that, that the darkness actually made us start looking for a light switch. And, and it's all Jesus. Mm -hmm. The more you find out about him, the more he just, he's inside of us, and he's just killing termites. Mm -hmm. And he just keeps, and then all of a sudden you look at things different. And I can relate to all these steps and, and everything, but man, that Jesus. Absolutely. He loves us. He's not anti-anything. Mm -hmm. He welcomes us. He pursues us. Mm -hmm. And he's relentless about it. <laughs> And, if, right. and now I go to him privately so he don't have to humiliate me publicly. <laughs> so it's just a win, win, win. And I just go around and I speak it out of my mouth. Mm. I call it dropping J-bombs. I do it when I walk in my house, when I get in my car. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Mm. They don't, there's no, no little thing here on my <laughs> shoulder anymore. 
He don't want nothing to do with Jesus. Are you kidding me? So it's, it's a... It's a great thing. Can you tell I'm excited? You're, you're always excited. That's a wonderful thing. <laughs> Gentlemen, I'm sorry, but we're out of time. I, I do want to ask one question before we close, sure. though. Sure. Somebody's watching a story in another part of the world, but there, there are... I, I compiled a list a few years ago, and there's Celebrate Recovery programs in every state in America, I think. And this international now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so if somebody needs help, you would recommend to celebrate recovery and yes. and then we have a program Absolutely. called addiction knockout which if you just go to our website addictionknockout.com it's a 12 step program that, where we proclaim the name of Jesus and you can go there and take that online course for free gentlemen it's been an honor it's been a privilege to have you on the program today bobby thank you so much for co-hosting with us thank you Randy. Mm -hmm. and we look forward Play. to seeing Bobby. you guys keith sit down i got you <laughs> i'm gonna give you a big hug all right <laughs> this guy's touched my heart at this meeting <laughs> <laughs>
And today we see people still speaking in the name of Jesus, but, but we have our politicians trying to stamp out the name of Jesus because it's so powerful. Now, the Apostle Paul was also preaching in that day. And many people were being healed from his preaching. And so what they did was they didn't have television in those days. They didn't have radio. So what people would do is they would take a piece of cloth from some of Paul's clothes. Or they would take a handkerchief or something like that. And they would take it to other people and they would be healed. Well, today I want to pray for you. And I want to do the same thing. That's where the, this you know, concept of giving a handkerchief or giving a piece of cloth that Paul had prayed over, you know, and they would send it to these people and they would be healed is where the prayer cloth came from. And I have a prayer cloth and I want to pray for your need today and I want to send you this prayer cloth. This prayer cloth has no power. I have no power. The power is in the faith of Jesus Christ. But this prayer cloth is, is sent to you as a reminder to let you know that we've prayed over this cloth and that somebody is praying for you and your need. You can stick it in your wallet. You can put it in your purse. And it's just a reminder to let you know that it's a point of contact between you and I and that we are praying for your need. So right now, let's bow and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray over this cloth. And I pray for those that are watching this program that are hurting, that are you know, sick, that are hurting financially, that are hurting spiritually. And I pray, Father, that you would meet their need. And Lord, that this prayer cloth would be a point of contact uh, between them and us. And Lord, that you might meet their need and heal them today. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, friend, if you would like this cloth, all I want you to do is call the number that you see listed below, and we'll send this prayer cloth out to you absolutely free. So call us right now on the number that you see at the bottom of the screen. It, you know, if it's in the middle of the night and nobody answers the phone, just speak clearly and slowly. Leave your name and address, and we'll get this prayer cloth out to you.